Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting viewer suggested integral with floor functions, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from zero to one floor function of one over square root of dx dx. Substitution first. Let me call this u as square root of the x. Then your du has to be the same as 1 over 2 times x to the power of negative 1 over 2 dx. Okay, so that's why your dx has to be the same as 2 times square root of dx du. So putting all of this together, lower bound and the upper bound should never change for this, right? So that's why, let me call this integral as the i. Then this integral i should be the same as integral from 0 to 1. Then we have floor function of just 1 over u. And then dx was 2 times square root of dx was equal to u. So 2 times u du. Pulling 2 outside, this is the same as 2 times integral from 0 to 1 of floor function of 1 over u. And then u du. Then we can make another substitution. Let me call this 1 over u as, say, k. That means your u has to be the same as 1 over k, and u squared is 1 over k squared. Getting derivative, it has to be negative 1 over u squared du is equal to dk. So that is why your du has to be the same as negative u squared dk. So it has to be the same as now then negative 1 over k squared dk. And putting all of these together, we can rewrite this integral i. So integral has to be the same as 2 times integral. Now that the lower bound has to be infinity, upper bound has to be 1. So from infinity to 1. Then we have floor function of just the k. And then we have u. That has to be just a 1 over k. Times du was negative 1 over k squared dk. Let me switch this lower bound and the upper bound by pulling negative sign out and then multiplying this negative sign together so negative and negative become positive. So that's why this integral has to be 2 times integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over k cubed. That times floor function of k. Then we have dk. And since we have floor function, we can rewrite this as now then 2 times, let me make a bracket. Integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over k cubed, floor function of k dk, plus integral from 2 to 3 of 1 over k cubed, times floor function of k dk, plus all the way up to from n to n plus 1 of 1 over k cubed, and floor function of k dk. Close your bracket. Then we can rewrite this using summation sign. This is the same as 2 times summation from n is 1 to infinity of integral from n to n plus 1. Then we only have this floor function, so that's why it has to be n over k cubed. And then we have dk. Then at the same time, if you pull this n outside, so this has to be the same as 2 times summation from n 1 to infinity, that of n times integral from n to n plus 1, that of 1 over k cubed dk, so that we can evaluate this integral. So we're going to this integral, it has to be just the same as then, integral of from n to n plus 1 of 1 over k cubed dk. This has to be the same as negative 1 over 2 times k to the power of negative 2 from n to n plus 1. So let's keep working on this, right? So if you work this out, then it has to be the same as negative 1 over 2. Let's make a bracket. Then we have 1 over n plus 1 square minus 1 over n square. Close your bracket. So that's why we can rewrite this as positive 1 over 2, bracket 1 over n square minus 1 over n plus 1 square. And then using this, we can rewrite this integral i, right? So integral i has to be then the same as, let me multiply 2 and 1 over 2 to cancel this out. So that is why we should have now then summation from n is from 1 to infinity. That of this n times this bracket. 
1 over n squared minus 1 over n plus 1 squared. Distributing this n to those two terms inside, it's the same as summation from n is from 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus n over n plus 1 squared. Okay, from this, let's use a little trick. So let's rewrite this as a summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 squared. So that is why if you rewrite this, it has to be the same as summation from n is 1 to infinity still. That of 1 over n. And then minus n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. This is 1 over n plus 1. So minus 1 over n plus 1. Let me group this. Then we have negative, negative become positive. 1 over n plus 1 squared. Close the bracket. So we can separate this into two of the summations. So this is the same as summation from n is 1 to infinity of this 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And then plus also summation from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 squared. Then we already know the summation has to be equal to 1, right? So this summation should be equal to 1. It is all about evaluating this summation. Now just evaluate the summation. Summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, 1 over n plus 1 squared. We'll be using this basal series, right? So this is our summation. I'll be calling, say, a as n plus 1. Then we can rewrite the summation as summation from a is 2 to infinity, that of 1 over a squared. Then this is going to be the same as the summation from a is 1 to infinity of 1 over a squared minus 1 over 1 squared. So that's why using this basal series, this has to be the same as pi squared over 6 minus 1. So the integral i that we're looking for has to be 1 plus pi squared over 6 minus 1. So integral i has to be the same as 1 plus pi squared over 6 minus 1. So 1 canceled out. So eventually, we only have pi squared over 6. So the answer for this question is pi squared over 6. Because a pretty interesting viewer suggested integral. How amazing.